on the occasion of the 90th anniversary of the Foreign Policy Association, it's my pleasure to introduce a colleague of mine, both as a director of the Foreign Policy Association, and I am a member of the board of Royal Dutch Shell, and John Hofmeister is the president of Shell Oil, our U.S. operating company. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear now, right now, that John and I are not going to do an answer to why the energy prices are so high on natural gas, gasoline, or oil, because we'd be here through the night answering those questions. And at the end, you'd still have just as many questions. So we apologize in advance for not providing that duo answer to you. It's really uh, been an exciting couple of years for John uh, in his role as president of Shell Oil. Um, we have uh, encouraged John, and he has developed, along with the leadership team in the United States, a lot of outward reach to try to help and educate uh, people on all the various aspects of energy, not just oil and gas, but alternative energy, et cetera, security for our country and also for global needs of energy. And in that process, John has gone coast to coast, border to border, frequent flyer. He could probably lend you some mileage points if you need them, but I know all of you have plenty. Uh, interchanging with community leaders, with um, government people, with uh, neighbors, with uh, academics, etc., and has uh, personally interacted with over 15,000 people one-on-one -on -one. Uh, trying to provide additional education. I think it's uh, been a wonderful uh, initiative and one that will be continued. So without any further ado, my congratulations to John, and it's been a pleasure working with you all these years, John. The uh, citation accompanying the award reads, uh, the Foreign Policy Association is proud to recognize John Hoffmeister and Shell Oil Company with its Corporate Social Responsibility Award. John is the human face on one of the largest energy companies in the world. We recognize today his public spiritedness and his service to numerous not-for-profit organizations, including the Foreign Policy Association, through his efforts to address energy security and to stimulate a national dialogue. He has personally made good on Shell's commitment to build a better and more productive world for countless individuals and communities. Congratulations, John. Thank you, Noah. Thank you. Dana, Noel, uh, Noel, and uh, Mary, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, when you make a product that nobody wants to see, touch, taste, or smell, you know that you had better take your responsibilities very seriously. Over two days last week at congressional hearings in the Senate Judiciary Committee and the House Judiciary Committee, the nation saw five oil executives queried by Republican and Democratic senators and House members alike on what is a fundamental issue in this country. And the point that at least I was trying to make is that the politics of partisan paralysis will not solve the energy crisis that this nation is experiencing. Affordable energy, affordable to all Americans, those who make less and those who make more, and dealing with climate issues at the same time, and dealing with the consequences of the shift that will be taking place in this country on the energy spectrum, moving from hydrocarbons to other alternatives, all of these have to be taken into account at the same time while we recognize that energy is the baseline on which economic well-being rests. It is also the baseline on which lifestyle choices are made. And when energy is scarce, and energy is scarce today, we live on a razor's edge of supply-demand relationships, it becomes ever more important for the companies that provide that energy to come out and meet with their stakeholders, their customers, their elected officials, their regulators, their media, whoever it may be from coast to coast and around the world to try to help build understanding on what it takes to deliver energy to a country that needs it. 
Today I spent part of the day in Denver, Colorado. At noon, Shell settled a 25-year-old lawsuit in cleaning up the Rocky Mountain Arsenal. If you ever want to hear a story about America's ability to respond to a true crisis, read about the Rocky Mountain Arsenal. This was a nearly 20,000 acre set aside by the U.S. government to make chemical weapons in World War II and following World War II up until the 1980s when all production activity ceased. This 20,000 acre plot was moved up to the top of the EPA priority list in terms of Superfund cleanups. This 20,000 acre Superfund cleanup site, ladies and gentlemen, is now a national wildlife refuge. Because of the cleanup efforts of the United States Army and Shell Oil Company, we have transformed what was a chemical basket case into an urban wildlife refuge just six miles from downtown Denver in which bison, coyote, deer, eagles, owls, prairie dogs, and all form of species now live in nature's harmony. This is an example of getting out and talking with the people of Denver to acknowledge in the final closeout of the last lingering lawsuit associated with this uh, situation that we can make a difference. We can make changes. We can learn. But I also said today to the people of Colorado, this closes the chapter, but it opens a new one. Because we need to work in Colorado to bring energy to Coloradans for the future. We need to work across the United States to bring energy to Americans from hydrocarbons to wind to solar to hydrogen to biofuels. There are so many solutions that we have, ladies and gentlemen, that we can work on. Gasoline does not have to cost $4 a gallon were it not for the politics of partisan paralysis. Those people who can hardly afford it are looking for leadership, and the leadership, if it's not coming from partisan politics, must come from elsewhere. And so it's Shell's endeavor to tell that story. But Shell has another story to tell as well, and I'll be brief. And that story is, what does social responsibility mean to a company who makes the product I described, that you don't want to see, touch, taste, or smell it? And that social responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, covers a wide area of diverse application. Environmental stewardship, I gave an example of one site in one state in one country. But more than that, the air we breathe. Since 1997, when our gifted chairman, Sir Mark Moody Stewart, gave the line to the company, that the Stone Age did not end for the lack of rocks. He also embarked upon a journey towards renewable businesses, but also made certain other commitments, such as the reduction of our own carbon footprint. I'm proud tonight to say to you that Shell's carbon footprint, our CO2 emissions as a company, are now 25% less than in 1990, while our company has grown. It can be done through technology, through effort, through leadership, we have reduced our own carbon footprint so that now I'm able to say to the United States Congress and to the Secretary of Energy, Shell supports a cap and trade system for the United States of America. Shell believes the debate on climate change should be over. It's time to get on with solutions. And last week, sitting in Washington with a group of CEOs and NGOs, part of the United States Climate Action Partnership, we worked together, the 35 of us, to find ways in which we could bring information and bring points of view to the Lieberman-Warner debate because the United States Climate Action Partnership wants the United States of America to cap emissions, and Shell, as an active participant in that process, wants to find a way sooner rather than later. Because CO2 emissions, when a country like ours uses 10,000 gallons of oil a second, 
not a minute, not an hour, 10,000 gallons of oil a second, and three carloads of coal, 100 ton carloads of coal, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, one carload of coal every three seconds, 20 a minute, we are pouring CO2 into our atmosphere. And we believe it's time to cap it and to create a market-based mechanism such as a trading system to do something about it. So that's in the environmental area. In the human rights area, Shell has human rights policies built into its business principles where we will not operate in countries that do not recognize the human rights of their citizens and have been practicing that now for more than a decade. In the area of business integrity, a zero tolerance on bribery and corruption. Not only to say we do it, but to report what we do each year. Where in business principles, it's the deeds that you do that matter, not the words that you say. Because words can be inexpensive, but deeds matter. And so for the last 10 years, we've had a public report, in addition to our annual report, called the Shell Social Responsibility Report, which reports how many employees or contractors were let go for corruption or for bribery all over the world. In the area of what happens when governments and companies have to work together, we report on the partnership. We believe in transparency. And so we have policies on the transparent reporting of the kind of bonus payments that are made in countries around the world with respect to the oil payments that are made. Shell is a believer in social responsibility because it works. Because as it permeates the workforce, and something we're very proud of, is every new generation of Shell employee not only are taught these principles, but are invited to join Project Better World, which is a worldwide effort by our young staff to get involved in their communities, their local communities, so that, for example, at every refinery around the world, there is a community social plan in which the leadership and the staff of that refinery work closely with the community on the issues that the community wants to talk about. In the expansion of Port Arthur, Texas, where Shell and, and Saudi Aramco and a joint venture called Motiva are putting $7 billion into Port Arthur, Texas to more than double the size of that refinery from 300,000 barrels a day to more than 600,000 barrels a day, the community plan is a sine qua non of how we go forward in the construction and the operations. And in this plan is a commitment that through technology and improved efficiency, the unit emissions per barrel produced will be lower in the new 600,000 barrel refinery than they were in the current 300,000 barrel refinery. A public commitment made to the community of Port Arthur and to the state of Texas. So when it comes to social plans, in places like Pinedale, Wyoming, where we're drilling for natural gas in what is an arid, high-altitude desert, practically, <laughs> the community, again, is involved. And it is checked by our Social Responsibility Committee of our Board of Directors to see that we are following through on what we say we're going to do. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud of the job that we're doing, and I'm honored, deeply honored, for the privilege that the Foreign Policy Association has placed upon my shoulders on behalf of all of Shell tonight in accepting your award. Thank you so much.